Uh, yeah, I first want to <coughs> read to you all a poem that I received in the mail um, last week in honor of veterans and, and accompanied a picture of a sign that's right outside our stadium. Um, the sign says PFC Dale Raymond Jackson Memorial Highway. It's more than just a sign. Can we pass that around? It's more than just a sign. It's fall around the city of Columbia. Football is in the air. Fans parading into the stadium. Black and gold is the color they wear. Amongst all the bustle and scurry stands a rectangular memorial sign. White letters spell out a name. The students meander on by. That name has such a meaning, but goes unnoticed by the passerbys. It's the name of a valiant young soldier protecting our freedom is why he died. The name of Dale Raymond Jackson is stenciled upon that roadside sign. He's one of over 58,000 who put their future on the line. Yes, it's just a simple green sign erected alongside a roadway, reminding us of the sacrifice they made so you could be here today. So go about your day and have a wonderful time, but please say a little blessing for your freedom when you see that young soldier's name upon that memorial sign. Del Raymond Jackson grew up in Columbia. His parents um, uh, had, what I've been told, his parents had season tickets to Mizzou football. Um, and in fact, Dale attended many games in his junior high and senior years. He attended Hickman High School, was drafted into Vietnam, gave his life for our freedom. Um, and I want to take a special moment to recognize the insignificance of that sign um, that I had not known until I received a letter from Gary Blackmore. And I appreciate Gary Blackmore's uh, letter that he sent to me. And I believe he wrote this poem and has made it his, his life's work. He was in Vietnam uh, with Dale and has made it uh, part of his life's work to make sure that we uh, memorialize and remember the sacrifices that they made. So I wanted to make that um, in lieu of memorial or in light of Veterans Day last week. So appreciate that sign even more every time I see it. Um, this week's a special week for us in honoring our 27 seniors, uh, guys who have a combination, which is what makes the team so unique, a combination of guys who have spent their entire careers here, um, stayed through a coaching transition, some that believed in me and stayed uh, committed to us, and some who committed while we were in the transition. Others who chose to join us on their journey, um, and just appreciative to these guys and men uh, who have seen tough days and, and great days and sold out days at Faro, and hopefully they'll get one more opportunity to run out uh, in front of a, uh, a, a sold out Faro field and play their last home game for the Missouri Tigers. Uh, but a special group of men uh, who've really worked hard to restore the roar at Mizzou. I want to start with uh, the guys who, who have chosen to be here their entire career, Chris Abrams Drain, uh, J.C. Carlisle, Xavier Delgado, Cayman Hayes, Sean Hendershot, Harrison the Thicker Kicker Mevis, Ennis Rakestraw, Chad Bailey, Javon Foster, and Darius Robinson. Other guys who chose to join us on their journey, Joseph Charleston, Mookie Cooper, Niles Gaddy, Rillis George, Peanut Houston, Jaden Jernigan, Marcellus Johnson, Josh Landry, Micah Manning, Nathaniel Pete, Bency Polgar, Tyler Stevens, Ben Stratman, Theo Weiss, Riley Williams, Tyron Hopper, and Cody Schrader. These young men, these 27 men, combine our senior class, uh, and we will honor them in Faro Field uh, prior to the game. I know weekend times are precious, and there's a lot of different things, especially going into the holiday weekend, but I hope that this, uh, the students will remain one extra day and, and make sure that our student section is full um, and I hope those that, that have no plans will make a, a Saturday evening in Faro special for those guys one more time um, as we play a very difficult opponent in the Florida Gators. Um, 
you know, I'm really proud of our team and what they accomplished last Saturday. But as I told the team and the staff, uh, our mindset has got to be 1-0, and and we've got to take the emotion out of the victory and move on to our next opponent. Um, you know, Florida is a very talented team. Um, I, they have a, a very talented roster, much like they always do. Um, and they're very efficient in what they do offensively and defensively. You know, obviously, last year when we played them, they had multiple draft picks, including, I think, the number four overall pick at quarterback. This year, I think they're playing even more efficiently with their quarterback. I think Graham Mertz is playing outstanding. Obviously, as a Kansas City uh, native, um, is doing a very good job of being efficient in Coach Napier's offense. He spreads the ball around very well. Eugene Wilson um, does an excellent job as a true freshman, is a really a dynamic player in this league. And then they have outstanding running backs with um, Etienne and um, uh, Montrell Johnson Jr. Both those guys are dynamic playmakers. Defensively, uh, their defensive coordinator um, has made the comment that he has a, a tool shed of defense. I think it's more like a man cave. I think it's very deep. Um, he's got all kinds of defense and, and, and plays multiple fronts, coverages, blitz schemes, um, has all kinds of corrections, and, and um, does a really good job with what they're trying to do. And then special teams um, is efficient. So we're going to have our challenges uh, this week, but it really starts with us in choosing what it takes to win. You know, we talk about winning doesn't negotiate. Um, and we have to choose the standard of Toughness Tuesday and the way that we're going to practice this week. Um, we can't rely on last week's performance. We have to, to stand alone on what we're going to do this week. And it starts today um, with our coaches, making sure that our meetings are prepared the right way and having the, the right intensity. And it starts with our, uh, and then it follows through with our captains, making sure that our captains uh, demand that, that our players perform and practice at the standard that it's going to take to be successful. So with that, I'll open it up with questions. Four questions. Um, you know, I think this is also new for everybody. I don't know that I have a history to say that this is making it faster or not. I just know that this is a special group that's bonded together. I think it's um, a little bit more special because of the, the amount of choices that the guys have had to stay, go, return. I think <clears throat> this year they're all united with a single purpose, uh, a team mission. You know, we, we, we kind of have adopted the motto uh, for a couple of years, one team, one goal, one and oh. And I think this group of seniors kind of embodies that. We're, we're united for one team, and, and that's the University of Missouri. Those guys who have been here four, five, six years, have you gotten any sense from them, like, and I understand it's not over, but what this season and the sellouts and, and something they haven't experienced here has meant to them? You know, one of our, uh, I've, I've referred to this a few times, but our core value always compete to do it better than it's been done before is each year we kind of pick a few things like, what have we not accomplished here before? And let's shoot that for that as a goal. And it's been, hey, let's consistently sell out for O. Let's make for O a home field advantage. Let's do, you know, let's get that, um, um, you call it field, field storming game win. And we've been able to do those, those things so far this year. Um, and, and some of these freshmen, you know, like KD and JC and Ennis and Harrison, their first experience at Faroe was COVID. So, I mean, we were always in a 20,000 capacity crowd. And then the next year, you know, we, we didn't have uh, quite the success that we needed to early in the year to really engage the fan base. And even last year, you know, I think about Georgia was an awesome environment, but it wasn't a sellout. And now we've got those sellouts in that street going. So I think it's been pretty cool. Um, that they've built it to what it is now. You've said a few times now that these players believed in you. What, what was your pitch last December or January to get these guys to put it on? Well, I, you know, I don't know that it was so much me. I think it's a belief in um, Coach Russell, strength and conditioning, knowing they could see the, the benefits not only in their physical performance but in their mental performance. 
uh, their confidence and their preparation. I think it's a belief in Zach Parker and the training staff and how he was consistently able to get their bodies to perform at a high level. I think it's uh, Liz and the nutrition department and the growth that they're making in their, their body mass index and um, loss of body fat. I think it's also the belief in the coaching staff and, and knowing that those guys are, are preparing them to play at a really high level. I mean, I think all of those combinations, I think maybe there was a belief that I could potentially pick the right people. You know, I think you look at Javon and X, I think we were just named, don't think, I know we were just named semifinalists of the Joe Moore Award. There was a belief that, all right, we believe that Coach Drink will bring the right people in. And obviously, Coach Jones has done a lot um, for us on the offensive line. So I think it's a consistency in the people that we've surrounded them with. I don't necessarily know that it's me. It's more about the people that we've surrounded them with. Yeah, I, I don't know where the phrase came from, but kind of restore the roar, um, re restore the roar of Faroe Field, and, and um, hopefully it's a, a new trajectory of Tiger football. We'd kind of been stuck there in that middle, um, and, and now obviously this year we're not, you know, and, and obviously we got to finish. Um, uh, we got to finish the season, um, but there's a new respectability to our program, whether it's on the recruiting trail or on the football field, and that's a tribute to those guys. Um, and their belief and when others chose to leave they chose to walk shoulder to shoulder and move forward together and that's a pretty special thing yeah you know I they're a really good football team out I mean I know their records not what they want but you know, outside of <coughs> us, I think they've played Tennessee the, as dominating a performance there. And, and um, you know, I, they obviously have some really talented players. I mean, you look at their roster, it's littered with four and five star guys, uh, top to bottom. Um, they've gotten big recruit uh, transfers. Uh, Ricky Persall is a big time transfer. I think the uh, offensive lineman, um, I uh, Micah Mazaka from Baylor, I, I know he's a big time transfer that, uh, you know, we even looked at. So, you know, I think uh, their defensive end, Princely is as, as good a, a defender and defensive end as there in the, is in the country. So they've got some really good players. Um, I know that Coach uh, Napier is building the right kind of culture and the right kind of fight and the attention to detail and they've got really good schemes on both sides of the ball. I don't know that their back against the wall has really got anything to do with what our preparation is going to be about. You know, our preparation is understanding that we respect our opponent and who they are and what they, they the level of play that they can perform at. I mean, they just took LSU. Um, I mean, it was at one point in the third quarter they had the lead, you know. So I think we have a lot of respect for them, but it's really about more about how we want to play and what kind of mentality we want to play with and the attention to detail that we need to have in practice this week and the fundamentals that we need. Um, you know, we have a lot of respect for what they do offensively. Um, and it's really going to start with stopping the run. You know, they, they uh, run the ball really efficiently and then allow play action and quick game to, to keep their offense on the field. And so, you know, we're going to have to, you know, figure out um, a little bit of what we want to do defensively. I think we found a lot of success last week in that odd front um, in creating some overlap. And so uh, I've challenged Coach Baker to really dive into that a little bit more um, with our personnel. I think maybe it gives us a, another dynamic to our defense and, and um, you know, being able to utilize the odd front defense um, to help us maybe add some coverage uh, I think we were better in coverage because we had a little bit more underneath coverage um, and not having to rely so much on man to man. Coach, with that, with that up front, can you walk through kind of what that gives you to come after you um, on defense with some of that coverage and also what it does to an offense and maybe how they might have to adapt to it? Well, it creates a whole new uh, set of problems for your, for your angles as far as how you're trying to block stuff. Um, 
and just how you can climb up to your linebackers. Um, we were able to add JC and Dalen Carnell into our run fits and, and even Joseph Charleston some. And so, um, you know, Joseph's always been a really good tackler, so is JC down in the box. Um, and it takes a little bit of pressure off of your corners, not playing so much isolation and, and um, having some underneath coverage. You, you, you can play a little bit more over the top. I and mean, we only gave up six explosive plays on Saturday, which is the fewest we had all season. I mean, and outside of the, the heck of a catch that, that the young man made uh, for the touchdown, I mean, we, they really weren't behind us a whole lot. So um, it just allows us a little bit more flexibility. And obviously, being able to be in and out of fronts um, is a whole no, another monster, you know, as a as a coordinator because there's schemes that you like versus odd, and there's schemes that you like versus four down front, and, and um, you know you got to figure out which ones you can carry. Is that a matchup specific thing, or is that something that you feel like is, is a regular part of your package going forward? Oh, I think it's a, definitely a regular part of our package going forward. We had done it quite a bit um, early in the year. I mean, we did it versus middle. Um, and even versus Memphis, but we end up we're dropping our defensive end into coverage, and that's not really what any of our DNs were built to do. And so I think you know those guys on the defensive side of the ball kind of found a different way to get it done um, with some personnel. Speaking of your DNs, the Royals Award list just came out, and Kevin Peoples is, is one of the guys nominated for that. Can you yeah. talk to the job he's done with the position? Yeah. That you Came in saying it's our biggest question mark. Yeah, congratulations to, to Coach Peoples on, on being the nomination. And, uh, you know, I think it's a combination of his uh, ability to develop that position. I mean, it was a position that we were very nervous about going into the season. I think I read today where D Rob's maybe third in the league in sacks. Um, and so he's taken a guy who had never played the position and, and molded him into one of the top players in our league. Uh, at that position, as long as well as bringing Johnny Walker along, getting the most out of Niles and Joe, developing our younger players, um, you know, and he's done it for two years. I mean, he did the same style of thing with Isaiah McGuire last year, um, and then he's recruited at a really high level. Obviously, I can't name any specifics, but I think we've got some pretty good recruits at that position. Um, and so, you know, when you think about assistant coach of the year on our staff. You know, I think he represents exactly what we're trying to do, which is coach our position at a high level and recruit it at a high level. And a lot of times, you know, coordinators deserve a lot of credit. And both of our coordinators, all three of our coordinators, could be easily deserving of that credit. Um, but I think it's pretty special when a position coach gets that opportunity, too. Well, to be honest, I think they had a lot of pride. But after watching the tape, I think they had a lot of, boy, we, we got to play a lot better. Um, and, and technique and fundamentally, we got we to gotta continue to improve. Um, so they were a huge part of our success from running the football and protecting the quarterback. But um, you know, I think the mindset of our team, which is embodied why we're playing so well, is we go back in there and watch the tape, and we're really critical on ourselves. Like, man, I, I, I got to play better. I, I didn't grade out the way we needed to grade out. I, I left some technique and fundamental stuff out on the field. My mindset was right, but my technique and fundamentals have to improve. Coach, a lot of success against Tennessee, one of the best rushing teams in the SEC. Florida presents a little bit differently, though. Uh, bigger personnel, and it feels like Trey Wilson's on mo in motion pretty much every play. What's the key to stopping the run? Okay, I thought you were going the other direction. So us stopping their run game. Right, yes. Yeah. Sir. Well, um, yeah, I, I, again, Coach Napier does a really good job. Multiple formations, multiple shifts, motions, multiple personnel, 12 and 11 personnel. Um, a lot of different eye candy as far as you know moving people around. Um, and then they've got dynamic playmaker with Trey Wilson, and they've got really good running backs. Again, I think it's multiple fronts. I think it's being able to be uh, uh, multiple in what we're trying to present them, um, creating different angles, uh, different, different attack points uh, at the line of scrimmage. Um, which is what Coach Baker's really good at doing. Yeah, I do. Uh, Tyron X-rays were were clean. Uh, MRI was clean. It is a, a ankle sprain. Um, it was pretty swollen yesterday. Um, he's going to treat the mess out of it today. I'd say he's questionable. Um, so we'll, we'll see how he progresses this week. Yeah, 
Yeah, really proud of the way he came in and, and handled a lot of tough duties. Um, and, you know, it's been a guy that has started out on fire in the spring and, and has slowly just continued to build. And I think he embraced his role on special teams, um, did an excellent job in that role first, and has gotten comfortable with the play speed of the SEC. And now he's getting more and more reps on defense. And, and uh, you know, it's going to have to be ready if his number's called this week. I think he's very efficient with the football. Um, he's very decisive in his reads. And he, he just doesn't put the ball in jeopardy very much. I mean, I think he's got two interceptions on the season. I think he's got a pretty good streak going right now as far as number of completions without or number of attempts without interception. So you can tell he's an experienced football player, uh, experienced in, in um, making decisions that don't affect the team, uh, don't negatively impact the team or the, or the, the drive. And, I think that's always part of a good quarterback. It just was handed a note that Cody Schrader was just named one of the finalists for the Burlesworth Trophy. Uh, congratulations to him on that, and, and well deserved. Yeah, you, Eli, how much will you use Cody's story, you know, going forward as examples for guys like in your program? Oh, I think it'll be pretty, <laughs> pretty significant. Yeah, pretty significant. The good news is somebody kept the receipts of me saying the week before last season on Thursday that the whole world was fixing to find out about Cody Schrader. So I get to take some pride in the fact that I was adamant about it before everybody else was. So that, that was good news. Appreciate Dave Matter breaking out, re breaking out that tweet for me. Um, at that time, he was a reporter um, and, and tweeted it. But uh, no, Cody's story is going to be uh, – I mean, it's going to be a story of Mizzou football, and quite honestly, it's going to be a story of the University of Missouri in, in, for a long, long time. Um, I know that, that this place has a bunch of great history, and, um, but when I think of uh, Midwest, I think of a, a place like the University of Missouri we've always talked about. You've got St. Louis and Kansas City, but rural Missouri is kind of the spirit of, of this state. you got a guy who – really embodies the spirit of the state, the, the hard work and determination, self-made people. Um, you know, there's a lot of farmers in this state. There's a lot of cattle, uh, cattle ranches. You know, those people are self-made. They show up every day, work extremely hard, unsure of what, uh, uh, of what the future always holds, but they bet on themselves. And I think that's, you know, it's kind of the story of Cody Schrader. Um, he talks about uh, in, in a video that our creatives released today about, you know, his when he came here, his confidence in himself became stronger the more he was elevated on the depth chart. And now he talks about, you know, after the game, talks about his mindset is he's going to – it's who's going to quit first, and he's not ever planning on quitting. So uh, it's a pre pretty, pretty awesome story. I think it probably resonates with the city of St. Louis too. Um, and I think Kansas City could probably get on board with that. What did I say? You said, I've said some dumb stuff. Go ahead. <laughs> you said you'd take him in an alley fight. You know, anybody on the team would pick Cody Schrader. I said that? You said that. Damn, that's pretty good. That's strong. I, I would still pick it. But, man, Tyron Hopper would be right there with me. I, <laughs> if I got to choose, I don't know. I like both those guys a lot. I like both those guys a lot, lot. You know, D-Rob's so big. D-Rob would have the intimidation factor, you know. But, yeah, I like Cody a ton. Yeah, I mean, I think he he just believes everything's a blessing in his life, and it's a privilege to be here and represent the University of Missouri. And you know, there's a difference between earning an opportunity, earning an opportunity, and feeling like it's deserved. Um, and I think his mentality of earning, you know, he, he he doesn't really want anything given to him. He wants to earn it. And um, I mean, that's what he, he he shows up to work every day, and and. Um, yeah, he's earned it.
Well, that was a big-time press conference.